Hello there, my fellow Space Hulk exterminators, and welcome back to our series on famous battles and campaigns in 40k. Today we shall resume our quite literal forays into the sin of damnation at the side of the Blood Angels. Now, before I begin though, I was asked by a couple of people if this particular story is THE story from the old Space Hulk board game. The answer is yes. In fact, this story is a lot older than even I thought initially, as I do remember now some funny flash kit animations about this exact story from something like a decade ago. Anyway, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us get right back in the action, shall we? With the second wave of attacks staved off, Captain Raphael ordered his squads on the offensive. However, even as the gene stealer attacks lessened, they were not completely stymied, and a small number of the aliens managed to break through the perimeter via an undetected route. Unfortunately, two tech marines, which were isolated from the other support squads, went missing. Their power armor continued transmitting their functioning life signs, and Captain Raphael organized a rescue. It was unthinkable that the sacred gene seed of the Blood Angels should fall in the hands of the gene stealers. With the majority of the force committed to securing the hibernation zone, Raphael once again looked to squads Gideon and Lorenzo to locate the missing tech marines. Although squad Lorenzo located the missing Astartes, they were both sorely wounded. Unfortunately, it was too late to salvage the gene seed as both had been infected by the gene stealers and the viability of their gene seed was compromised. Instead, they were granted the Emperor's peace by the Stormbolters of the Terminators. Meanwhile, the data from the retrieved CAT unit showed that the support systems of the merchant ship, where the majority of the gene stealers were located, were serviced by just one pumping station close to the aft of the vessel. Test releases of toxin gas brought from the strike cruisers had demonstrated that it was possible to poison the gene stealers. However, the concentration required was a ridiculous 100 times higher than the fatal dose for a human. The Blood Angels had to secure the pumping station to flood the merchant ship with gas, and at the same time prevent the gene stealers from escaping once the toxin was deployed. It was Captain Raphael's intention that a diversion attack by Lorenzo and Gideon squads would lure away the majority of the Waken gene stealers. If the enemy could be tricked into thinking that a secondary concentration was the Blood Angel's target, that would open the way for the main force to advance against minimal resistance. During the attack on the secondary gene stealer position, contact was lost with the members of Squad Lorenzo. Life sign transmitters showed that they were not dead while sensorium data revealed that they were in previous defensive positions, but unmoving. As Captain Raphael absorbed this turn of events, he received new information, this time from Librarian Calistarius. Although it was unclear how Squad Lorenzo had been incapacitated, the effect on the Space Marine situation was dire. Lorenzo and his warriors had taken a heavy toll on the Gene Stealer reinforcements, but still several hundred creatures had survived to threaten the flank of the main attack. Brother Calistarius raced up to link out with the outermost assault squad, led by Sergeant Leodinus. As the young Lexiconium fought his way towards squad Lorenzo's last known position, his abilities detected the unmistakable sign of some kind of alien attack that was the cause of Lorenzo's disappearance. Notifying Captain Raphael about his suspicions, Calistarius was then ordered to link up with Squad Leodinus instead. But by the time he arrived, only one battle brother was alive. The two surviving Blood Angels then proceeded to the last known location of Squad Lorenzo. When they finally arrived, Lorenzo confirmed that they had indeed been subjected to some kind of psychic attack by the Gene Stealers. The exact nature of this threat was indeterminate but the need to rejoin the main attack was now pressing. However, Calistarius detected a strange presence less than a kilometer away, unrelated to the gene stealers. Not wanting to deprive Captain Raphael of all his warriors, Lorenzo and Gideon agreed to split. Following the psychic trail, Calistarius and his companions discovered an ancient Blood Angels battle barge, which had been lost in the warp 9,000 years ago. 
Chapter history attested that this was the Wrath of Baal, and it was carrying an important artifact of the Blood Angels all the way from Terra after the siege of the Imperial Palace had ended. Lorenzo and Calistarius were determined to locate this treasure and retrieve it from the clutches of the aliens. Within the chapel vault of the Wrath of Baal, the Space Marines discovered a Golden Grail, none other than one of the famous Blood Chalices. It was stained with the actual blood of the Primarch, and a psychic link with Sanguinius coursed through the Blood Angel's veins. Once recovered, they had to fight their way out of the chapel and towards the bulk of the main force. Brothers Lorenzo and Goriel disappeared during the fighting. Calistarius had to take direct command. The main force had been battling hard at this point to contain the gene stealers in the hull of the merchantman, although a few would inevitably escape the cordon. It was imperative that all squads were available for the final attack. Calistarius led the remnants of squad Lorenzo and Leodinus from the Wrath of Baal, back towards the main force of the First Company. However, such was the treacherous nature of the Space Hulk's layout that the shortest route forced them to break through the corridors of a vessel whose emergency bulkheads had closed. As the Space Marines cut their way through the bulkheads, enemy life signs were closing in. Although they were just a hundred meters away from the rest of the first company, the returning space marines from the Wrath of Baal had to face two obstacles. The first one was a winding network of corridors and rooms sealed by locked bulkheads. The second was a gathering number of gene stealers which had been attempting to circumvent the cordon set around the pumping station. Although the artifact had been returned, the space marines were still isolated. With the main force unable to break out of their pocket to help Brother Calistarius and his warriors, the Space Marines were left to make their own way out of the maze. On the other side, although they suffered significant casualties, the Blood Angels had fought hard, and the majority of the gene stealers were contained in the hold of the merchant ship. Tech Marines had jury rigged large vats of the toxin gas to the control systems in the pumping station. Captain Raphael expected a strong response once the gas started pumping, and thus had arranged two lines of defense between the aliens and the means of their demise. The first was the cordon of squads directly around the hold. The second was the survivors of squads Gideon and Lorenzo, who protected the pumping station directly. To ensure that it stayed operational, the space marines defending the control chamber were ordered not to fire heavy weapons into the pump room for fear of damaging the toxin vats. With a thrum of power generation, the pumping station was finally activated. The tech marines withdrew from the line of battle, and the space marines prepared for the inevitable assault. The lair of the gene stealers was a spacious artificial cavern, and it would take some time for the toxin to build up in enough quantity to actually kill them. Detecting the encroaching gas, the gene stealers began to wake even more quickly roused by the impending threat. While the remaining Blood Angels fought a desperate battle against the never-ending hordes of the Gene Stealers, the Toxin attack was still a success, and all but a few hundred of them had been eradicated. The surviving Space Marine squads swept the Gene Stealer lair for the remaining aliens, and then fanned out into the other sectors to hunt down those that escaped before the gas was released. Sergeant Lorenzo had reappeared after fighting his way out of the Wrath of Baal. He reported encountering a new kind of gene stealer though, bigger and faster than the others. Between the psychic sense of Brother Calistarius and a deep probe scan from the orbiting strike cruisers, the Blood Angels were able to locate another two creatures like that. Raphael ordered Lorenzo and Calistarius to take tissue samples from the aliens for future analysis and then destroyed them before they awoke. Lorenzo pulled together an assault force from the most battle-ready survivors and went on. He would be successful in destroying two of the sleeping broodlords. During that encounter, Brother Zale sacrificed himself to save the sergeant, and the third broodlord was driven away, believed dead. Isolated from the main force, the survivors of the mission were now at the heart of a rapidly converging circle of gene stealers intent upon destroying those that had slain their leaders. There was no chance of relief squads from the main force reaching them in time. Following the readings on their sensorium, the space marines fought their way towards the exit as best they could. 
Their objective now was a service shaft leading out onto the surface of the Space Hulk, from where they could be extracted via Thunderhawk. The tissue samples carried by Lorenzo were an important source of information, and had to be returned at all costs. Just a few dozen meters from their escape, the Space Marines came across the collapsed deck. Under increasing attacks of the Gene Stealers, they had to negotiate their way across the wreckage and reach the external duct. To make matters even more difficult, the angry surviving Broodlord had returned for vengeance. At the end of the day, it was only through the sacrifice of his fellow battle brothers that Calistarius was able to fight his way off the Hulk's surface, and then signal command for an extraction. He did obtain both the genetic sample and the ancient chapter relic, but only at the expense of many brothers' lives. The force of the first company Terminators did manage to eradicate a whooping 40,000 gene stealers, cleansing the sin of damnation and enabling the secrets to be plundered by the Imperium. Maybe most importantly though, at least for the Blood Angels, they had avenged a long-standing stain on the chapter's honor. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the cleansing of the sin of damnation, part 2, for today. A nice, short and intense story, if I do say so myself. Like I said last time too, you can read about the events in this story, in a much more detailed fashion, in the book Sin of Damnation, by Gav Forb. The volume includes both the old novella as well as the newer short story. What about you though? What are your thoughts about the story? Were you familiar with it from the older days of the board game? Do you think you could have cleared the gene stealers more effectively? Do share your thoughts or tactics in the comments below. If you found the episode entertaining or informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and the Emperor protects.